Hi everyone, welcome to your 13th R tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use functions in R. And I'm actually going to split this up into, uh, into several parts, simply because um, I don't want these videos to go too long, and uh, functions are a very useful tool in R, so I don't want to, I don't want to skimp on the subject. I think the easiest way to show you what a function is in R is to create one and kind of walk you guys through what it's actually doing. But before I actually create a function, let me walk you through a calculation that you might need to perform in R. Let's say you want to take a vector, square all the values in the vector, and then add the results together. This is actually a very common operation in mathematics and statistics and it's called calculating the sum of squares. Let me walk you through an example. So, let's say the vector that I'm inter interested in is the collection of all numbers between 1 and 10. Uh, so to create that vector, it's just 1 colon 10. I'll send it to the console, and you can see in the console that's indeed what it is. To, to square all the values in that vector is very simple and straightforward in R. You just raise it to the power of two like this. And let me spread things out. I usually like to, to spread things out in parentheses. Um, you don't need to, it's just, I think it's easier to read that way. Okay, so the vector is on the inside. It's rounded by parentheses. And then there's that angle up two. Some programming languages use double star to, but R is a language where it uses that angle up to to mean uh, mean raised to the power of 2 squared. Let me send that down to the console, and you can indeed see that all the values were squared. Lastly, to take up, to add up all the values of a vector, there's a built-in function in R that will do that for you, called sum, and inside sum, I'm going to put just going to copy and paste and save myself a little bit of typing. So if I take the sum of that result, I will get 385, which is indeed the, the sum of all those values. Now this calculation wasn't that bad. You can see there's only a few keystrokes on that line 3 where you can wrap everything together. At the same time, it's a little bit ugly and it would be nice if we could have one nice function that did everything for us in one step so uh, so that we don't really have to you know think about the calculation every single time it doesn't take up too much space um, it'd be it'd be nice uh, let me put it this way it'd be nice do you see how that sum function is just three letters and it adds everything together it'd be really nice if we could have one function name that did all these operations and it didn't you know take up all the space so that's what creating function it, functions is all about in R. To, well, the first step in creating a function is to give that function a name. I will call it sum underscore sqr for sum of squares. The next step to creating the function is to use the assignment operator. And at this point, the, everything should look, uh, all of that I've done so far, should look very familiar. I have the name of an object on the left hand side, I have the assignment, and then I have the assignment operator. We've used this before in assigning values to variables, um, whether they be numbers or strings of characters or something like that. We've also taken, uh, or we've taken vectors and assigned them to variable names. Now we're just simply going to take a function and give it a name. The next part to making a function is typing out the word function and uh, to, uh, a set of parentheses. Inside this parentheses go the arguments of your function. Basically, you can think of the fun uh, a function as a machine. Uh, an object or multiple objects go into the machine and out of the machine comes a result. So these arguments are, think of those as your input into your device or your machine. 
Uh, in this case, we're only going to have one argument, an array. You can name the argument anything that you want. In this case, I'm just going to call it x. And that x isn't a variable that actually has to exist yet. It's more of a placeholder for your function. So when I write my function on the right-hand side, which I will in a minute, anything that has x on the right-hand side will eventually be replaced based on my input. I think it'll be a little bit more clear when I, when I actually execute the function in a minute, but just think of x as a placeholder. It's not an object that actually exists yet. Now to create the, uh, the blood and guts uh, of my function, the, the stuff that's actually doing stuff in my function, I need to surround that in angle brackets like this. So I'm going to create those angle brackets and I'm going to write the function. And I'm just going to use that line 3 as a template. I'll just go ahead and type it out. I, uh, I'll assume that you guys can, uh, can uh, follow along here. Two. And notice that's the, really the same thing that I had up in line 3, except uh, instead of having 1 colon 10, I have that placeholder x there instead. Everything else is the same. I'm squaring the results and then adding all the results together. I'm going to go ahead and send that to the console. And now I've created a function. And notice up on the upper right-hand side, there's this new category called functions up in the workspace. Uh, and that's essentially, uh, you know, a different category. We haven't really seen it before. Um, uh, but it's just something to, to be aware of to, uh, that something has been created in your workspace. Okay. Let's actually test this function and see if, uh, if it gets the results we, respect, if we expect it. Let's try sum underscore square, 1 colon 10, send it to the console, and there we see 385. So this example was kind of simple. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a simple example um, because uh, I didn't want to throw a complex one at you and maybe go over your heads. Um, you in this case, you probably don't need to create your own custom sum of squares function. It's just a really nice way to, to walk you through this example. Uh, I'm going to spend the next uh, couple of videos uh, showing some other uh, some of the other functionality in, in R as far as creating functions and using them. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys soon.